It's time for Off the Press on the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Let's introduce our guest, Mr. Tunde Kolawale. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, my sister. How was your weekend? Fantastic. Thank you. Um, let's Great. begin with the Punch newspaper this morning. The headline reads, Parallel Congresses. APC threatens to expel, suspend, or shun, Poirot, Delta, others, errant members. We will not tolerate parallel congresses, divisive activities in any state chapter, declares APC. We will take our results to Abuja. That's according to Arik Bishola's group. Oshun Governor's group says no violence, it was hitch free. Also on the top of the um, headlines on the punch, it reads Nigeria spends 1.77 trillion naira on national calls, SMS, in one year. Petrol consumption jumps by 340 million litres in one month. Nigeria's loans from World Bank, AFDB, rise to $14.35 billion under Buhari. Hush puppy. Suspended Kiari appears before four-man panel this week. Petrol subsidy may go up 2 trillion naira this year. That's according to Renault Boss. External reserves gain $280 million in two weeks. Also, Estate surveyors reject Fashola's monthly house rent proposal. And federal government dismisses NARD strike. Resident doctors down tools today. All right, let's move to the Nation newspapers next. The big one there says APC, PDP sink deeper into crisis ahead of 2023 elections. Governors to decide Sekunda's fate next week. Kayamo Ogala insists on Buni's exit. How to save Nigeria from Forex backlash, and that's by experts. Um, also on the nation this morning, four killed, 50 houses raised in Plateau State attack. Lady caught with 35 wraps of cocaine. Also, hush puppy, police begin carry probe, DCP on suspension. Forex pressure to force Nigeria's further fall. And also duties, 30 private jets risk customs seizure. Anambra 2021, ex-PDP aspirant Obiora Okonkwo uh, takes a um, ZIP ticket. And also COVID-19, Lagos records six deaths, 519 cases in two days. Those are the big ones on the nation this morning. And let's now take a look at the next newspaper, The Daily Trust. The headline reads, Ali Kachala unveiling the Zamfara terror kingpin who downed NAF jets. His rise and exploits, experts say, treat them as terrorists, and security analysts here saying how they can be tackled. Hush puppy, police begin probe, suspend Kiari. Federal government reforms 620 billion naira to states for federal roads in three years. Pharmacist Council seals 348 illegal premises in Edo. Presidency to Lamido reveal how Turaki surrendered governorship ticket to you. APC to expel big wigs over parallel congresses in Kwara, Kano, Lagos, others, and students worry as federal government meets ASU over fresh strike threat. All right. And on the Guardian newspapers, an NPC's FAAC contributions drop as subsidy hits 438 billion naira. Government faces tough policy options as revenues worsen. OPEC quarter, local challenges uh, undermine production despite rally. And Nigerians consume 2.113 trillion worth of petrol um, in one year. We can also find on The Guardian this morning, COVID-19 cases, others to suffer as 16,000 resident doctors begin strike today. NMA, NARD say family of disease, doctors yet to get benefits 115 days after MOU. Government yet to get notice of strike may invite NARD to parlay today. And also, Lagos did not issue directive to reduce allowances of NYSC doctors, says Commissioner. Still on the Guardian newspapers, PSC suspends Abakiari as Kakol urges officer to submit for trial. Worries over IPOB's threats to lock down Southeast over Kanu's travail. And we are monitoring developments on Twitter ban, Commonwealth tells Nigeria. Ipman to suspend distribution of products in Eastern Zone over alleged police harassment. And also seven killed in fresh Plateau State attack. Mr. Kolawale, good morning once again. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. 
All right. Um, I think we should start with uh, talking about the uh, crisis with the parties. Uh, the story on the nation this morning says APC and PDP uh, sink deeper into crisis ahead of 2023 elections. Uh, uh, there's also challenges with uh, Uche Secondus and uh, May Malabuni, um, as they both have their you know individual party squabbles. Um, but aside that, the world congresses in different states over the weekend also saw bits of violence in a couple of states. Um, what's your take on how these parties uh, are faring in the build up to the next general elections? Well, um, the, what the parties are simply telling us is that uh, 22 years after this democracy, they, that they have not grown at all that they have not developed, that internal democracy is still not reigning or is still not being practiced in most of these political parties. Despite these experiences of the past uh, 22 years. And why is it that we don't have internal democracy in all our parties? Those are about two or three things. First and foremost, politics has remained the Jesus business that any Nigerian can embark on today. You show little or nothing, and you reap a bountiful harvest. So, all politicians struggle to get into office in a do or die manner. Furthermore, INEC is not a situation. INEC has merely concentrated on the organization of elections. It hasn't uh, been able to strengthen or at least uh, guide the party for now to strengthen or farm their structures, for now to practice internal democracy, and also for now to be self-financing and self-accounting. And despite the fact that INEC acts in the uh, Electoral Act, that no political party is allowed to form or establish a private army, and that Togri should not be allowed within the principle of our politics. INEC has not been able to enforce that law in the last 22 years. More importantly, too, uh, just as we have seen in the past, the godfathers who usually want to impose candidates on the parties. And then there will be some other people who have their own ambition, too, who want to resist this. So when those two forces confront each other, what you get is the kind of crisis that we have seen in the congresses of the APC and some that have also been organized by the PDP. These people mild democracy, they talk about it, but they are the least democratic elements that you can find in our, in our midst. Now, if parties are this, uh, in this kind of a disarray, if they cannot organize their own domestic affairs in an orderly, a lawfully and democratic manner, how would they now be able to manage the society such that they will be able to deliver the dividends of democracy? It will be difficult, if not impossible. Mm. We as Nigerians owe our duty, the responsibility to really overhaul this democracy. This is not what we bargained for when people agitated, fought for, and even laid their lives that Nigeria should return to a democratic uh, process. So we need to do about something about this democracy. Uh, Mr. Kolawole, you have asked uh, important questions there, saying if these parties cannot properly organize you know, themselves, how do we expect you know, them to lead the country moving forward? Um, uh, also, we we'll see on the Nation newspaper and also across other papers, the story about Abakiari and a probe that is set to begin due to his link with Hush Puppy. Um, later on in the breakfast, we'll be speaking extensively about the need for reforms in the police force. Um, police force. But how do you come in here regarding, you know, all the links, you know, from, from Hush Puppy, this um, renowned internet fraud star con man um, to the DCP? Well, um, the story of Mr. Bakiari is an open secret. I am surprised that Nigerians are reacting the way that they are reacting. It's as if uh, they don't know what that man has been done all these years. It is uh, shocking to me. 
most criminal lawyers who have interacted with him will readily tell you that the man is not as clean as he has pretended to be. And the company that he keeps are not the company that a police officer should readily keep. I challenge you journalists to go and interview or talk to Evans' lawyer, that is Barista Ogunweje. He will tell you the experience that Evans had when uh, the Abaki Yaliti went to arrest uh, uh, the man. All his properties uh, were vehicles, art currencies, uh, expensive phones, expensive wristwatches, generator sets, and all manner of things. The man was cleaned up of it without a court of competent jurisdiction asking Mr. Evans to forfeit those things to, to the state. There was also a, a, an armed robber who was sometimes in the past arrested in Okorodu. His name is uh, Godogodo. He had uh, about two houses in uh, Ikorodu, and then I think some houses in Ibadan, and a uh, different uh, number of uh, uh, vehicles. I challenge you journalists to go and investigate what happened to all those properties after the man uh, was alleged to have traveled, which is an ephemism for being killed in the hands of the, uh, of the South uh, police headed by a back yard at that period in time. You also saw what happened at the Bikubana uh, mother's burial. It's a police cause, a senior police officer, supposed to be found in that environment. You also see most of the time in the company of some of um, the leaders of the National Union of Road Transport and Workers. And you would ask yourself, what is such a man doing there? The truth of the matter is that uh, if this story that uh, has not become the abattoir on his neck hadn't come from abroad, and a powerful abroad, a powerful force like the FBI, as it were, we would not have heard about it, simply because most of the police correspondents in the media houses, most of the judicial correspondents in the media houses, are in cahoot with uh, Mr. Bakiyari. In fact, most times, he calls them his partners. Those uh, correspondents, uh, correspondents, he calls them his partners. So, those people, even if they hear or know uh, or get any bad stories about him, they will most likely not uh, publish, they will uh, uh, suppress it. But with the social media now, and then these stories coming from uh, the FBI, the federal government is in the Kwandari, <laughs> as regards uh, what to do with the story. Can they neglect the FBI? The answer is no. If they neglect the FBI, then most of the trainings, most of the weapons, most of the military assistance that the American nation or the American government have been given to the Nigerian police, to the Nigerian army, to the Nigerian DSA, to the Nigerian EFCC, and most of the security forces in Nigeria, that will be lost. Okay, Mr. Kolawale, we need to we need to mention that. Um, what you're, meant, what you're saying, the things you've been talking about, you know, that journalists are partnering with Abakari and that his team had gone ahead to, you know, um, basically take things for themselves that were for alleged criminals, that these are speculation. They're not verified, just to put that out there um, so we can be careful of the, you know, um, statements we make, uh, Mr. Kolawali. But moving on now, let's uh, turn to the Daily Trust newspaper. Um, there's a story here that says Ali Kachala unveiling the Zamfara terror kingpin who downed the NAF jet. So this story basically, um, Daily Trust said they went on ground, spoke with locals, uh, security officials as well, to unveil this guy who allegedly um, was responsible for downing the NAF jet. So, you know, what we had seen in the news and, you know, sources from the military had said that this was a job done by bandits. But we're seeing here that the Daily Trust is pinpointing uh, this incident to a particular man and his group, Ali Kachala. But when we look at the history of how our justice system seems to work, do you foresee that there would be um, likely prosecution of this man or investigation at least? Well, um... If I get your question correctly, 
uh, Mr. Ali Kachala is calling for the Nigerian security forces to unveil the terrorists who might be behind the shooting down. No, 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 no. I'm saying that Daily Trust is saying that the person responsible is a man called Ali Kachala. Even though Kachala actually oh. is a traditional okay, name for Okay, I have the ruler. paper in front of me. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. So I'm saying, do you expect that the government should begin investigation into this person? Whether investigation has revealed that? Yes, I, I'm asking that because we've seen, you know, videos of, you know, alleged terrorists who've come out to say that they were responsible for killing soldiers and committing atrocities, but nothing was done. They, they, you know, the security forces, you know, never investigated that. I mean, as much as we know in, in the public domain. So I'm asking that in this case, for, you know, a fighter jet of the Nigerian Air Force to have been downed and we're seeing, you know, statements pointing to one particular person, do you expect that, you know, there will be investigations into this matter? Well, uh, of course, uh, 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 there has to be serious investigation. Uh, when you lose a jet, like the Nigerian Air Force have lost, those things cost millions of dollars. And the life of the pilot was also put at a, a risk. And uh, we have said this time without number that uh, if the Nigerian security forces had been diligent in the way and manner they have uh, pursued Namikano, in the mere manner they have pursued Ibuho, they would have been able to unravel some of these egregious crimes that the terrorists or the bandits have been committing all over the place. But somehow, we haven't been, we haven't been seeing much energy being put in that direction, even though the activities of a bandit have small consequences or has more capacity to really destroy Nigeria as a, as, a, as a country, as a nation, to destroy the unity that has been our lot since the time of independence. But for reasons the best known to those who manage our security, they haven't been paying much attention to these uh, areas. And the consequences is what we are seeing today, that the rural banditry, urban banditry, have been mushrooming all over the country, such that if care is not taken, these people, those non-state actors, will take over the affairs of the country and then begin to impose their wings and caprices on all of us, just as they have started doing in some of the territories that they now control, in which they collect taxes, levies, dictate to farmers when they can go to their farm, when they cannot go, take people's uh, wife kill uh, women's uh, husbands, and do all manners of things. So, my take is that uh, we need to ravel and then uh, bring more of those who have uh, been undermining the security of the Nigerian state to book. All right. And you should remember, this wouldn't be the first uh, jet that has been down. There was one that was uh, said to be lost some time ago, which I doubt whether the the, 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 the aircraft All right, Mr. Kola, we'll up to now. Well, Mr. Kola, like we'll I said, it takes a lot of money and several years of training yeah. to train a pilot to be able to fly the kind of jet that we are now using on the... All right, on the Mr. Kola, we'll in the interest of time, I, I want you to... Can, can you hold on, sir? That is not at war. So we, can you hear us clearly, Mr. Kola, we'll we are man, we are losing it. All right, Tunde Kola, we'll can you hear us? Yes, all right, brilliant. Um, if you can, in a minute, because we need to go, if you can, please quickly speak on the NARD strike, which should start today. The government says they're not aware of any strike notice, uh, but the doctors have decided uh, a few days ago to down tools as from today, Monday. Remember that we're still dealing with, you know, it seems like a surge in COVID-19 cases. Um, what's your response to the doctors going on strike after the failure of government to respond to their memorandum of um, mm. action? Please, louder, please, louder. Uh, all right, I want you to speak on the NARD strike. The? NARD strike, the National Association of Resident Doctors. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I can see that now. Well, uh, the story I read here is that uh, it is the utterances of uh, the Lagos State Governor, 
Mr. Babajide Sonwolu that has precipitated the medical people to embark on a fresh uh, strike. Well, uh, so far since the man came into power, that is Mr. Sonwolu, he has behaved like a gentleman. I'm not too sure he will deliberately want to go out in there and start precipitating crisis uh, in the health sector. But the truth of the matter is that each time the Nigerian state, whether at the local government level, whether at the state level, whether at the federal government level, had made promises to striking workers, to striking professionals, and reached an agreement with them as to find a solution to whatever problems they may have um, uh, undertaken a strike to ameliorate. As soon as the strikes are called off, an agreement are signed, the federal government will never go back to meet its own side or meet its own obligation or fulfill its own side of the agreement. So the workers and the professionals, they are just to call off a uh, strike. You and I will still know that the ASU people, the academic staff, you know, Nigerian University, are also threatening that they will go back uh, to the strike they called off not too long ago. In fact, I think some universities have already started. And this is because all the promises that were made to ASU, the federal government has not fulfilled most of them. The ones they have fulfilled, they have done it in an haphazard manner, such that neither the government nor the striking academicians are able to benefit anything from what the federal government has been able to do. But the truth of the matter is, like I've been telling my uh, academic and uh, my friends who are in the academics, that what they are pursuing is shadow for any Nigerian profession, whether they be medical doctors, whether they be lawyers, whether they be academicians and what have you, to say that um, the federal government should create an oasis of a conducive working environment for any class, whether they be ASU or medical doctors, is a mirage. They are chasing shadows. What all these organizations should be pursuing is good governance across the board. Without good governance, you cannot have the good uh, university system. Without good governance, you cannot have a medical institution that will be able to pay salaries of its health workers, allowances, and provide the facilities with which the medics, the nurses, and the doctors, and then the, the laboratory people, they, they will work it. Without good governance and all that, there will never be revenue. There will never be resources to expand our health facilities. There will never be resources to build more schools. There will never be resources to provide more structures of infrastructure. So I will want to say with all emphasis, I appeal to most of these organizations that you know, they should concentrate their efforts on uh, getting good government for the country as a whole. So that all status, all facets of our lives can be properly catered for by responsible people that we can all join us together to put in government. Uh, look at what we are reading from the papers today. All the major parties, if not all the parties in Nigeria, I want this array or the other. If Muhammad Yelisho will raise party that came on board recently, it's now factionalized. There are two uh, right. uh, factions of the party that are now adjustment for power and you can say that for all the different parties all over the right. place. Uh, the fate of the Nigerian people doesn't lie in any of the parties that we have on ground today. All but right. we we'll have to wrap up here, Mr. Kola can be cutting from ensuring that we will have good governance across right. board. Thank you very much uh, to Nicola Wale. Um, we always love to hear your perspective on these issues. Uh, thanks for joining us and for starting the week with us uh, this uh, Monday morning. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. So we'll both be going back to the year 2019 to talk about two stories that made history in the healthcare sector and entertainment.